Hello, what's up my witches and people out there connecting to this video. I am Naya and in this video I want to recoup on what we were saying in my life that accidentally apparently got deleted about the message that I want to give to baby witches or people who are practitioner of witchcraft. Before I start, I'm going to be very diplomatic and just give you an overview of why I am saying this. I am a natural born witch, meaning that my mother and my grandmother were witches and I have been born and raised in a family that was well aware of the energy around us and the power of energy work. Not even mentioning that my father has wrote a book about Satanism and has worked with a very notorious exorcist. So I perfectly know where certain practices especially stem from and I have been studying at university philosophy and religion and I have been studying the esoteric art throughout my life. And this is why I want to give you guys some information as an educational video in regards to witchcraft and esoteric practices all over the world but especially for those baby witches who might be watching TikTok I don't have TikTok personally but I saw some of the videos or might be fascinated with energy works and are listening to so many things around them without naming anybody so there are a few practices that I saw here online have been spread like candies and obviously these practices on YouTube have a very a watered down uh, sort of feel and vibe to them. Um, many of this practitioner or claiming to be practitioner, now we have to determine whether or not they're actually practicing witchcraft, they know something about it, or they're simply using that knowledge for some other reasons that will depend on the person that we're talking about. But I feel that some of these practices, they can be very harmful because in actuality, they're stemming from one of the most famous black magicians of all time, the wickedest man in the world, Aleister Crowley. And I'm going to talk thoroughly about Aleister Crowley and my vision of Crowley in this video, as well as a bit of education and warning to those baby witches who are attracted to certain specific practices here on YouTube that I think in some extent are promoted because of, you know, uh, monetary business that are around these practices and the person that is promoting them, and in some other cases, for some other YouTubers, it could be just simply ignorance or in education in regards to the esoteric arts. But when we're talking about esotericism, we cannot mention the fact that, that it takes years to, to study these matters and not even one YouTube videos can get you closer to some of these practices. And if you're taking the law of attraction, energy work and witchcraft seriously, well, this is a time maybe perhaps for those of you who have connected to this video to really know the truth of us certain practices and to take them to the next level. I also talked about them in my Patreon for those of you who are interested. But what am I actually referring to in specific and why this is almost a warning to baby witches out there? I cannot probably pronounce this thing, otherwise I will get demonetized on YouTube, but I'm referring to this magic over here. I know it sounds so silly that I have to write it down, but obviously it's the one with the S magic as well as blood magic. And when I mean blood magic, I mean also your own personal fluid, you know, the menstrual cycle and all of that stuff that is considered black magic. And where these two practices stem from and who created them in the first place? Well, as I said in my last live, the person who has invented even the terminology S magic and blood magic is Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley was an individual that is very famous in the esoteric circles all around the world and he was born in 1898 in England and uh, Aleister Crowley is a very crucial figure for many esoteric practices and being born in a family that has a tradition of witchcraft, by the way I'm Italian, so our tradition is even 
more ancient than the one that Alistair Crowley was promoting with his religion dilemma because my tradition comes directly from the Phoenicians and the ancient Roman. My mom has blood that comes from the Phoenician, one of the most ancient civilization of all time because she's coming from a very far island of Sardinia in the southern part of Sardinia. And so witchcraft and stregoneria, it's not necessarily bad, but actually stems from paganism and the, the laws of the universe in the sky. The law of attraction itself, it's not something that Abraham Hicks has channeled, even though she popularized it over here online and throughout the world, but actually the law of attraction stems from the Severan Hermetic principle that it is said that they are coming from the god Toth, the ancient god Toth. And if you want to know more about this, you can head on my video called The Difference Between the Law of Attraction and Witchcraft. Essentially, it doesn't matter in whatever shape or form you want to say it, we are talking about energy work that is so ancient as much as civilization is. Now, what happens in 1898 with the birth of Aleister Crowley, it's that Aleister Crowley takes it with his study because many consider him as a genius of esoteric art and definitely we cannot deny the fact that he was a very cunning and intelligent man. I wouldn't define him necessarily a genius, more of a madman to a certain extent, but definitely was intelligent and definitely he was heavily into studies of the esoteric, which includes the study of ancient religions and ancient civilizations. Guys, you cannot study the esoteric world. Esoteric means the knowledge of the hidden one. If you discard completely and water down the teachings of ancient religions, which includes Judaism, Kabbalah, Hinduism, the Vedas, the ancient Egyptian, like you cannot discard those civilization or history if you want to study witchcraft, energy work, and the law of attraction. To be honest, that would be very superficial. And Alistair Crowley was everything except superficial. He studied thoroughly not only the Bible and the gospel itself, and I'm going to explain you why in a second, but he studied Buddhism, he studied the Vedas, he studied yoga very, very well. That man knew everything about yoga. In fact, in his famous and notorious book, Magic, he has an entire chapter dedicated to yoga and to the practices because any esoteric practitioner will know that the Vedas knew how to open portals and dimension. And yoga, it's like, it's the key. It's working the body and your energy for esoteric purposes and to arrive to moksha and liberation. We're gonna talk about everything in a second, so follow me through. I know this is not a very, you know, candy, super easy video to watch, but follow me through because it has a lot of useful information for those of you who want to practice the esoteric world. So Crowley studied thoroughly throughout his life this ancient religion. The thing is that because of his perversion in his idea, his philosophy, let's put it this way, his way of seeing life, he perverted them and he transformed them into something different. He was definitely experimental with his own teachings, but he really took it to the dark side and he wanted this. This is what people don't understand when we come comes down to the figure of Crowley. Many people are kind of skeptical to the fact that maybe he was just a genius and he wanted to create a different religion to liberate us all. Well, I argue about that because he really wanted to be dark. Like he, his entire purpose was to connect with dark forces. He admits it all over his books. So I don't understand why prior, uh, after his death, we have to say, no, it wasn't in this way. It was in this way. He declared it multiple times. So, so let's be authentic. Let's be realistic about at least his intentions. So he studied also my tradition, Italian tradition. In fact, he put the basis of his philosophy and his religion in the island of Sicily before he got thrown out Afterwards, sorry, he got thrown out by Mussolini because of things that I'm going to describe in this video. So he knew about my tradition, which is one of the most ancient tradition. So he knew about it and he perverted it and he twisted it into something else. And because I saw his astrology, the astrology of Crowley, his birth chart, he was a moon in Pisces and he had Jupiter in Scorpio. 
he was psychic he knew how to make prediction not only because of the rituals that he was doing he was truly psychic and expanded i have the opposite you can say jupiter because scorpio is a very dark placement for jupiter okay let me tell you this scorpio rules the eighth house the people that have jupiter in scorpio are people who are going to be expanded in the material of the esoteric world in this darkest sense whether you can they can take it to a positive side it doesn't have have to be negative but this is kind of the truth and i see that in his chart i am the opposite i have jupiter in cancer edgar casey i think uh, no nostradamus had jupiter in cancer so it's more about the connection with the feminine side and the mother goddess and you know it's a different, uh, I think, way of seeing the world. And probably somebody argued that we need everything. So I'm not going to judge and touch on that. But one thing is sure that you have to give to that man is that he was, he, he was psychic and he knew how to make prediction. And in one of his books, the Book of the Law, which is one of his most popular books, he makes a very clear, simple predictions. He says, in the future, the world will elevate itself to a different Different type of consciousness we will see different humans and the humans that we're gonna see are the ones of the book of the law those will be my children and these people will accept my preachings as do what thou will and when we are mentioning do what thou will we have to mention generations like Crowley has uh, influenced not only our generation but it has influenced Led Zeppelin it has influenced the 60s movement Black Sabbath and all that we have seen in the past and in the past of our parents because do what the will what essentially says according to Crowley because we always see it and we always have to see it through the perception and through the eye of his own channeler so according to Crowley do what the will doesn't mean like for Wicca even though Wicca has certain connotation with Crowley but doesn't mean do what the will as long as it arms none it means you can do whatever you want there is no limit there is no integrity there is no morality the ultimate thing is to live an instinctual life that is basically determined by your will but in the moment that you do that not only you lower your vibration you become completely not empathic with other people because if I do whatever I want a hundred percent i'm disregarding the need of a community or a collective and in fact he has lived his life like a beast that's why he was considered the beast it's not just because of the connotation of the antichrist that was given to him in his years but because of the fact that he was constantly feeding only the body he wanted he didn't want to transcend the body like many yogis want to do and that's why they refer to liberation as moksha or the 12th house even in astrology which is the house of liberation for yogis for instance that are elevated like such as Yogananda uh, or Krishna Krishna for instance I consider Krishna a yogi even though I know it's a god or many others like even modern days liberation it's not associated with the instinctual and bestial act of the body but is associated with transcending the body so Crowley knew about all of this and instead of saying let's transcend the body I'm going to use the body as the vessel to live and experience everything through me and he took this idea, in my opinion, from the tradition of the Aghori in India, because let's mention that Crowley has traveled all over the world, including India, China, the Middle East, everywhere. So he met those people, he knew about it, but he mixed this this religions this philosophies with his own idea because he wanted to come up with his own religion called Thelema now let's move backwards a little second and understand for those baby witches who don't know how S magic and broad magic is actually associated with Crowley and why would it be bad and why Crowley was so bad let's talk a little bit about his history and let's educate ourselves for a second because we're truly living in Crowley's era even though we are not aware of it and I really do believe that his prediction have come true and we kind of have to break it free through knowledge and education so Crowley was born in England in a family of a preacher 
So in a very Catholic environment, now you can like or be part of Christianity, that doesn't matter. That is the fact. Christianity, especially in 898, was the prominent religion throughout the West. And so he loved his father. He used to go and preach with his father. So even having the influence of a preacher certainly has you can say on one side traumatized him or has inspired him to adopt a religious point of view, okay, since a young age. Unfortunately and dramatically, during his childhood, his dad passed away and he was always with his dad. So probably he has felt alone and he has felt like completely shattered apart. And possibly this might have influenced also his belief in faith and God, which uh, later on he will call the false God because it's almost like for a child that God has failed him in a way and has taken away his only parent because he wasn't very connected with his mother. We could talk for hours about the, you know, the healing and the trauma, the childhood trauma of Crowley. But matter of fact is he goes back and lives with his mom, which was also highly Christian and highly Catholic. And he decides to rebel completely to Christianity, but in a way that it's very perverted. He had very strong sexual addiction throughout his teenager life and childhood life. In fact, he was also a poet, but he used to write very decadent and almost pornographic poet, po poetry, which you can like or not, that's a matter of preference. And so, if you read what he was writing even back in those days, he was very clear about the fact that he hated Christianity, he hated the figure of Christ, he hated anything that was good, and the only thing that he wanted in his life at up until that point, he wanted to sin. And he started to treat very badly even his mother until he went, I feel, to college, if I am correct. And so he goes along, you know, taking drugs that are from cocaine to heroin to experimenting with alcohol, no judgment whatsoever, but this is what he has done because he wanted to pervert his body. He wanted to completely sin and be against and be in the dark, the ultimate rebel you know, in a way. And his mother, in fact, is the first one that gives him the uh, name of the beast with uh, chapter 13 of the apocalypse, because the mother, again, was always reading the gospel, and also he was also reading the gospel. So he goes into his, uh, you know, teenage life, uh, goes with prostitute, perverse his body, does all of these things that are, you know, quite extreme, especially for that time. And again, I don't want to put any judgment on that, because I don't think that that is the bad part you know everybody can make mistake and we're not here to judgment on their private decision I feel that what is dangerous is what he did later on because of the teachings that he has given and because of so many people adopting these teachings whether they're conscious or not of Crowley not because necessarily of his personal life and identity so later on he goes and still he feels in college that he lacks something until he finds secret societies that have esoteric connotation and the society of the golden dawn now when we mention a lot of the practices that we see online today uh, through various channels that I cannot name because I don't want to be reported over and over again, so I'm just going to say I don't agree with them. You know who these people are. Many practices such as chaos magic, sigil magic, S magic, blood magic, most of these practices, including the, the Rider Waite Smith tarot deck, they come from the Golden Dawn. Now, the Golden Dawn was a secret society in England that had occult connotation, where they were experimenting through scriptures of ancient religion, esoteric practices. One of the members, for instance, of the Golden Dawn was Bram Stoker, the author of the notorious book Dracula. For instance, do you remember that in Dracula, there is the fact that you have to put the garlic against vampires? Well, Bram Bram Stoker wrote that because this is true in ancient Italy and in ancient, uh, you know, Stregoneria, we always have put garlic in our home to protect 
ourselves from energy vampires, physical and non-physical. I'm probably gonna make a video here on YouTube or on my Patreon about energy vampires, so stay tuned. So those people knew a lot about the esoteric world as well as ancient civilizations. And Crowley was a fundamental part of the secret society. Not only they were experimenting in the Golden Dawn, but they were also writing articles of an esoteric nature. And in fact, they are the inventors, we could say, the creators of sigil magic as we know it today. And what do I mean by sigil magic? If you want to know more about this subject, please go ahead and click on my video called Sigil Magic. So with sigil magic, I mean the practice that is well spread also on YouTube nowadays, that is chaos magic. Therefore, created a symbol in order to manifest a specific purpose. Well, this sort of magic was extremely experimentational and it stems from the ancient sigils of Solomon. The only difference over here is that Solomon were given the sigil through channeling God. Like Solomon was an ancient alchemist that is said was connected to source energy at large. And not only he channeled lesser entities, but he trapped into those sigils angelic presences. So the Solomon seals are extremely powerful and they are connected to the planets, Venus, Mercury, the sun, and so on in the sky. They're very different from chaos magic. Chaos magic is an experimental form, a watered down form of the sigil. But in Solomon's sigil, you are channeling God. You are channeling the angels, especially in the key of Solomon not the lesser key of Solomon. Don't worry, I'll cover that in a second. So you are working with a higher forces that doesn't get you drained. But with chaos magic, what you're doing, practically by creating a sigil, you are creating a thought form that can also be called egregore. And if you don't know, because you're just a baby witch and nobody teaches you this online, if you don't know how to feed this egregore and this thought form, what eventually is going to happen is that you you are creating a force that you can't control and that in most cases is going to drain you immensely like leaking energy out and it's not going to last for the long term unless you are an advanced practitioner and you're teaching someone to know how to build a thought form. For instance, thought form are some of the demigods that the Vedas have created, such as Kali. Okay, Mother Kali is a dimension of consciousness that got so expanded from a thought form. But the Vedas knew how to create and feed this thought form. Again, you can watch the video about Kali that my husband has done on his channel is called Shuprotim Chaudhary and you can find the link down below to know more about the mother goddess and the aspect of Kali and that dimension of consciousness. But even tabbing into certain dimensions of consciousness such as Kali has become can be dangerous if you guys don't know what you're doing. In the case of chaos magic, which is a very shallow form of sigil magic, it can be dangerous too because it can drain your energy if you don't know how to properly feed this egregores. Anyway, Crowley was part of this, was part of creating certain connotation of tarot. Mind you that I have a video about the history of tarot and learning tarot in 30 minutes because tarot stems also from Italian tradition. So yet again, Crowley takes from my tradition and changes the meaning to his own personal advantage and experimentation. But even in the Golden Dawn, they had limits when it comes down to conjuring or it comes down to experimentation. And that's why Crowley separates at certain point of his life himself from the Golden Dawn because he has no limits and he doesn't want to have limits. So what he does, he acquires a house in Loch Ness, which I think was owned also by Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin called the Boskeline House, I think. Comment down below if you know that name more. He acquires this home to perform one of the most ancient spells and rituals of all time when it comes down to conjuring demonic activity. Yes, I am not watering down anything, 
That's what he wanted to do. His purpose in his entire lifetime was to get connected to a demon. That's all he wanted. And I'm sorry, you can water this down however you freaking want to. That's what he wanted to do. And he does it in a very dangerous way because even Solomon himself, which he knew about, has written the lesser key of Solomon, known today, thanks to Crowley, as the Goetia. And Solomon, because he had godly power, is known to have achieved and master the demonic realms and trap them into the seals but the way he went about it was definitely more enlightened than Crowley that's you gotta give to them but anyway we're gonna talk about the Goetia in a second so what Crowley does into this house he starts this ritual but this ritual is very difficult because it requires extreme amount of efforts and not only energetically but mentally because it's long prolonged you have to do it for months you have to wake up every day and pray this lower entities you have to create and cast the circles multiple times it's very complicated and you know that is why the majority of even agoris in india they live completely isolated and they are monks basically because it requires extreme amount of energy and almost the life of a monk which Crowley wasn't willing to do so what he does after conjuring and trapping this lower entities throughout the house he decides to leave the ritual unfinished and goes away which is very bad because i wonder so many things might have happened in that house if you don't finish a ritual of that kind anyhow he seems to be always immune to the sort of things which i feel right now that I look back at his history it's almost like they wanted him to be immune because they wanted to use him these lower entities as a vessel to channel this generation that we're living today so you know they don't have any sense of time they know things will come and they use people to do this and he was the perfect vessel because he allowed them to happen to him so um he goes on and he finds a woman called rose that decides to marry after one day and they go together in in egypt and for the honeymoon they decide to sleep in the pharaoh chamber in the pyramid of giza and because crowley wanted to show her how much of a black magician he was he decides to take with him the goetia now what is the Goetia now? The Goetia is the interpretation of Crowley of the Lesser Key of Solomon. Solomon has written these books, The Key of Solomon and The Lesser Key of Solomon. I talk about The Key of Solomon in my video, The Book of Shadows, if you guys want to watch it. I don't advise people to read the Goetia. I don't advise people to connect with the Goetia and the Lesser Key of Solomon, but to only use the angelic realms in order to work law of attraction, energy work, meditation, witchcraft spells, and so on. Or at the very least, the planets and the gods, the ancient Roman gods or the ancient Egyptian gods. I don't advise to use the Lesser Key of Solomon because I know his power. I have been there, I know everything about it, I talked with exorcists, I know what that thing is all about. And in the minute that you even purchase that book, in a way, you are allowing that energy inside your house. So you better be conscious about what you're doing before you do it, okay? So, the Lesser Key of Solomon is the recollection, and the Goetia is the Crowley interpretation of the Lesser Key of Solomon, and is the recollection of all the demons and their prince and princess of hell. And each and every individual demon has a seal that you can use to conjure them for specific incantations. Then Crowley gives his own, you know, interpretation of the seal saying it's not, you know, everybody can do it, it's fine, you just have to know how to, um, you know, how to give offerings to these demons and they are going to do things for you. It, you know, it gives it like a very watered down, in my opinion, interpretation of the seals, which can be potentially very dangerous, okay? So what it does in the ancient pharaoh chamber, mind you that the ancient Egyptian used to curse and X those pyramids in order for no one to enter them. So they're already the fact that they were inside, it's kind of bad, in my opinion, especially doing a ritual. But yet again, he seems to be immune. He decides to conjure, I don't remember which one, but a demon inside the pharaoh chamber to show off with 
his new spouse. Nothing seems to happen at first and Crowley remains very frustrated out of it and uh, though a few couple of days later Rose, his wife that doesn't know anything about esotericism, doesn't know anything about ancient Egypt, has no knowledge whatsoever of this stuff, she's just an English woman, British woman, she starts feeling very sick and having visions out of the blue and one thing that he, she says to him is he is waiting for you and he asks who is waiting for me and he said Horus. Now, one thing that I know about these lower entities and you can watch my video about my paranormal experience to know more how do I know, these entities lies and that's like their prominent factor. So I highly disagree with the fact that he was truly in communication with Horus, but we will never know because we're still talking about the supernatural in a way. So he said he doesn't believe Rose, so he said, well, come to the Cairo Museum and show me, show me which one of these gods is Horus, which one of these statue is Horus. And imagine the Cairo Museum is the biggest ancient Egyptian museum, the most important. There's so many statues of Pharaoh, not just gods. And God knows how many of, you know, and other bits and bobs of ancient Egypt. So she doesn't have a clue, you know, about who is Horus. But... Nevertheless, she goes inside the museum and she points at one particular statue that is indeed the statue of Horus. And in that moment, Crowley believes her and believes that Horus wants to communicate with her. And through his guardian angel, or what he calls his guardian angel, Iwats, he channels as a channeler, as a medium, the Book of the Law, which is the book where his predictions are in. Okay, the prediction is just one line. So I, if you don't want to read it, guys, just don't. But I mean, this prediction is pretty, you, you can read it. It's found even in PDF, the book of the law. And the book of the law will be the premises of his new religion that he later on will call Thelema, like I was saying before. And in the book, there is this prediction of a new genre of humans that will do what they will. And they will have as worship and they will be the sons and daughter of Crowley, generationally speaking. Which is so funny because it did happen with the 60s, 70s and the generation that we have today. And in the book of the law, he explains very rituals and the way the religion is going to be. Crowley moves and goes and uh, he has a daughter with Rose that dies that call, he calls his daughter Lilith because he is a worshipper of the dark goddess and he's a worshipper of the scarlet woman that in fact he also channeled in the book of the law. And for Crowley you have to understand God doesn't exist. He doesn't. Satan doesn't exist. There's only one God and it's this God of perversion and is uh, this demons. That's the only thing that he cares about literally in all of his scriptures. So he goes throughout his life and experiment with this energy. He does such heavy experiments like channeling and conjuring demons, drawing a circle for protection and being outside the circle, which could be potentially super dangerous if you believe in this stuff. And he does this with a serious of individuals one of this uh, is a man where they decide to create uh, what is called that I can't pronounce as magic Crowley is the one that invents as magic because through the perversion of the teachings of Tantra and Tibetan Tantra, which is all the opposite because Tantra is about retention and not extension, but I made a video about it if you guys want to watch it, he creates this form of very perverted magic that uses orgasm and things like that in order to conjure demonic activities. People nowadays' interpretation of this magic, it's about manifestation and just liberating yourself. But the reality of the story it doesn't matter how much you want to water it down he is the father of that practice and that practice if it's done in the way that I've been seen doing by these girls is dangerous and potentially it will only leak your energy out and give you most likely a nervous breakdown at some point because you're just liberating energy unconsciously and you're doing it in a very um you know in leaking way okay the way he was doing it was certainly more serious and more dangerous of course than the watered down version that i see right now online but nevertheless he's the father of this practice and he spends i think a couple of nights 
nights so a week I don't, I don't remember how much many nights in the desert with this man practicing as magic and conjuring demonic activities what happens is he seems to be immune the man falls mad because all the people that have encountered him either have become prostitute, they have died, they committed suicide, or they went mad. So that tells you how much enlightened he was and how much he cared about other people. Never mind. He continues his journey and he found himself in Sicily. And is in Sicily with a couple of followers that Crowley finally uh, creates his own religion called Thelema in his own temple. And do you know what that religion was all about? Practicing as magic, conjuring demons, and the consumption of drugs on a daily basis, which include rum, cocaine, and heroin that everybody used to take and Crowley because he believed that in order the, to kill the ego you have to consume all of these drugs and then stare in a dark room uh, only with candles as light to stare at his painting in walls and if you guys google in the house of Sicily what those paintings were all about they were figures of demons where they were written on the de demonic activity and cocaine or something like that and other things related to you know copulation and stuff like that he obliged people to stare at those paintings for hours in a state of unconsciousness through drugs as some because he believed that that is the way that you killed the ego and got possessed by this entity which for him was the ultimate form of transformation believe it or not and this is where this form of magic as magic comes from okay so that's why I don't like these teachings on YouTube that that much and in this house in Sicily uh, he creates the cake of light what is the cake of light the cake of light which I think is even written in the book of law I'm not sure but definitely is part of the Thelema religion is blood magic he is the inventor of blood magic now the water version that we find online nowadays obviously only talks about how great it is for manifestation and how much you should only use it for your own fluids and your own blood and it's super safe it's not in the moment that you're using blood you're doing a certain level of sacrifice in order to open a dimensional portal of consciousness it's considered black magic you are inviting in lower entities it's not like praying a raidia. it's not like praying diana or ekati it's not it's a different type of magic that it's very low and the people who i've noticed have videos about it online they have the Goetia at home, they perfectly know about Crowley, they perfectly know about this magic and God knows if even they have used those sigils to gain their fame or popularity. Question mark, I'll leave that to you in the comment section. And again, I'm not saying this out of jealousy, but out of educational purposes. So, he creates the Cake of Light. The Cake of Light is blood magic and is a ritual that is a practically, you can read it on Google, is a blasphemy famous way of using blood in order because he believed in the black eucharistia okay which is if you go to the church you take the eucharist eucharistia which i don't know how to say in english you become the you know you're taking you're taking christ into you which is a very sacred thing at least for us in italy him he wanted to do the same but with the blood you were taking is god which for him is the only god you know which one I'm talking about potentially, you will take him within you and become God himself. In fact, what happens in Sicily is that they perform this cake of light ritual with various fluid, which included the blood of a cat. And one of the followers of Crowley drinks the blood of a cat and he, he dies and this is the reason why Mussolini which I'm not defending whatsoever I'm just saying reporting the history Mussolini decides to kick Crowley away from Italy for forever like not able to come back ever again because this die this man dies out of blood consumption and this is where 
this sort of teaching stem from. Crowley then, after this episode, loses all his followers and uh, the people that were there either go mad, they become prostitutes, like I said, they commit suicide, they end up really, really badly. And Crowley himself, I think he, he goes back to England, he starts writing some books, he's left with no followers and nobody believing in his religion and uh, he's left also broke and as a heroin addict. He has a massive addiction and this is pretty much his ending. It's a very lonely ending. At the end of his life, he, I think he stops taking heroin and he just is on methadone or something like that and he decides that he wants to... Uh, all his sons and daughters die, by the way, throughout his life. You can watch more about his biography if you're interested. And at the end of his life, he decides that he wants to have a magical son because he never felt connected to any of his uh, daughters and son, unfortunately, and he named them after demons, so that should tell you something as well. So he decides to have a magical son, so he met a woman, performs a ritual, and he has a son. And he, I feel is that is the only son he, have, uh, he has ever felt connected to, and he dies completely alone. And one thing happens when he dies, his uh, last lover's uh, reports, is the fact that he had no tears in his eyes. And when he has his last breath, the curtains of the hospital open up on their own and a thunder came, just like that. Which is very symbolic of how much he used his body as a vessel for lower entities and how much in a way he succeeded in his own you know belief and in his own goal never mind he dies alone with no followers broke completely with no money and an addiction and a decadent body but later on in the 60s the 70s and in this generation his teachings still his teachings still survive and they are so prominent all over the world and they have become so prominent because people don't even know about his existence nowadays and they don't educate themselves here on youtube they use chaos magic s magic blood magic completely responsibly especially i have been seen through these baby witches and here's the thing one of the greatest trick of the devil is to let you know that it doesn't exist and that's i feel he he succeeded especially with the figure of crawley but knowledge is power and the power of the light and the angelic realm as well as source energy if you don't want to call it god is much greater than all of this so the, my advice and warning to you all guys is to be conscious about what you're doing and who you are following without giving any names this time but remember if you want to do a pact with the devil or you want to use this lower lower black magic or lower even unhealthy if you don't want to believe in magic let's put it this way very unhealthy very lower vibrational okay let's put it this way or even use the law of attraction irresponsibly not knowing where it's coming from and some people because they are hashtag positive vibes only with this positivity they have hidden the majority of Crawley's teachings and on one thing I have to agree with Doreen Virtue this is true they have hidden Crawley's teachings in spirituality and positivity and light but we cannot forget the father and of these teachings and where they're stemming from so if you want to really do a pact with the devil, at least do it consciously. At least do it because you're aware and full of knowledge. And if you don't and you're scared with all these horrible things that I've been explaining to you, good for you. There is a better way. I have been teaching energy work since I was a child. Never, only for a moment of my life, unfortunately, like I explained in my paranormal activity video, I have been witnessing of this horrible energy and one of my friends died because of this so I I really don't want to scare you guys but if you want to work the law of attraction or you want to work energy you need to do it consciously you need to do it safely and you need to go to people that are experts of this okay I'm only here to share I'm not saying necessarily I'm supremely expert but I'm 30 I've been studying all my life okay 
when it comes down to yoga even go to people that have studied this esoteric practices because yoga is not just physical activity it's also an esoteric practice in a way they have been studying this throughout their life and possibly they also come from the land that has created yoga if you're going to witchcraft the law of attraction make sure you don't get scammed out of the excitement of manifesting things make sure that you're talking with people that have researched truly their stuff and they know everything or at least least a lot about it and they can suggest you healthy practices that are safe for your energy your mind body and soul and this is all for today and this is the warning that I wanted to give you as well as a bit of a background in Crowley's life the father of as magic blood magic and a lot of practices that people don't talk about it openly nowadays as well as the Rider Waite Smith tarot deck because the Rider Waite Smith was created during the golden dawn time so make your own research and remember knowledge is power I hope you appreciated this video and comment down below to if to tell me if you know more about this subject and what do you think about Crowley's prediction of this new humanity and you know see each other on my Patreon as well because I upload weekly over there about witchy content and so much more and I see you guys soon bye